Got another exam question here on the carbonyl compounds topic. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So explain why pyruvic acid is soluble in water. Well, it's because it can form hydrogen bonds with the water. There's a couple of ways you can do the diagram. So I'll just quickly talk through this one first and I'll show you the other way. So what are they looking for? They're looking for the dipole across the OH bond on the OH group and the dipole in the water molecule. They're also looking for a hydrogen bond drawn from a lone pair on the oxygen to the H of the water molecule. And the other way to draw that would be like what's on the screen now. So this time I'm going from the lone pair on the oxygen of the water molecule to the slightly positive hydrogen of the OH group. So moving on to the equation now to represent the oxidation of propane 1,2-diol under reflux. This is not balanced yet. I want to talk through how to balance it rather than just put the answer on the screen. So if we talk about this alcohol group first, it's going to be oxidised. This is a secondary alcohol and so therefore it's oxidised once to a ketone and it produces a mole of water. This is a primary alcohol. So because it's under reflux, it can be oxidized twice, first to the aldehyde, then to the carboxylic acid. So there's two oxidations taking place um, for the primary alcohol and one for the secondary. So we need three moles of oxidizing agent. Remember, the secondary alcohol oxidation produces a water molecule. When you oxidize the primary alcohol, you only get water formed in the first oxidation to the aldehyde. So that's a total of two water molecules needed. Moving on to the label diagram for the reflux apparatus. So it doesn't have to be a work of art. Mine certainly isn't. It's just got to have the sort of key bits covered. So it's not the finished diagram, by the way. I want to talk about a couple of other things as well. So what have we got? We've got a round bottom flask, or you could have a pear shaped flask there. Obviously the chemicals are inside. We've got a heat source and it's perfectly fine to just have an arrow pointing up with the word heat underneath. And we've got a condenser fitted to the flask. So just make sure that your diagram hasn't got any leaks here. It's fully sealed because you don't want the vapors going out there. Um, and also the other thing to note is you must never put a stopper in the top of the condenser uh, in the reflux position. So the only other thing they're going to be looking for is the direction of the water flow through the condenser, the outside part of the condenser. So the rule is the water always goes in at the bottom. So water in and it always comes out at the top. So moving on to the mechanism now. So I've got our displayed formula there for the pyruvic acid. We've got the reducing agent represented as an H minus ion, a hydride ion. So the first thing we need to do is take a curly arrow from the pair of electrons on the H minus ion to that slightly positive carbon. And what that's going to do, it's going to repel the pair of pi electrons completely onto the oxygen. And it's going to break the pi bond in the carbon oxygen double bond. Uh, you'd be left with the sigma bond. So that would give us the intermediate shown on the screen now. Now there's a couple of ways to finish off the mechanism. You can either bring a water molecule into play. So obviously put the dipoles on it. And then we take a pair of electrons, or the curly arrow, sorry, from the lone pair on the O minus to the slightly positive hydrogen, and that's going to break that HO bond. So that's obviously going to produce the product and a hydroxide ion. Alternatively, you can just use an H plus ion instead of the water molecule, and so the mechanism would look like that. And the final part, so how do we distinguish between pyruvic acid and compound A? Well, it's all down to the fact that compound A has an aldehyde group in it, whereas pyruvic acid doesn't. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You could, obviously, once you've talked about compound A containing the aldehyde group and pyruvic acid not containing one, you could say react them both with Tollens reagent. Compound A will produce a silver mirror because of the aldehyde group, whereas pyruvic acid won't. The reaction type is, you could either say oxidation because the aldehyde group is oxidized to the carboxylic acid group, or you could call it a redox reaction 
because, like I've just said, we've got an oxidation process of the um, aldehyde group. The reduction process is the silver ions in the Tollens reagent, they get reduced to silver atoms, and that's the silver mirror. The product of that reaction would look like that. So basically, the aldehyde group is now a carboxylic acid group. The rest of the molecule stays the same. Alternatively, you could react both of them with acidified dichromate 6 ions. This is another oxidizing agent. It's going to oxidize the aldehyde group to a carboxylic acid group. And so compound A would give you the orange to green color change. Pyruvic acid won't, because there's nothing in this that can be oxidized under these conditions. The reaction type is still oxidation. Aldehyde going to carboxylic acid is an oxidation process. The reduction process is the chromium in the dichromate 6 ion. You've got chromium in its plus 6 oxidation state here. It's reduced down to the plus 3 state, which is the reason for this green colour being formed.